I hope that you like what I'm wearing, y'all, because I am a little tight up here. Whew, that was a good one. Yes, I love red. Red represents love. It's all about Valentine's Day coming in February 14th. Well, we are about to read another book. And this book is very important for you. Because you don't know how we make clothes. And one of the books, the best book I've seen so far, that talks about it in a certain way, is titled Bit by Bit. And it's written by Stephen Sandfield. Steve, Steve Stanfield, Steve, Steve Sandfield is a very good author of writing this book because this gentleman here is a tailor and he decides to make a coat in the story. And in the story, the coat starts getting ripped and starts touring and he keeps changing it to different types of clothing that the tailor can make. And so he finally makes one, and that one is the one that his child will carry on, who happens to be the one that speaks in the story. Isn't that interesting? Let's see Bit by Bit by Stephen Sanfield. I love when they make illustrations like this. They're so colorful. They're so beautiful, and it makes you want to look at the pictures. Well, here's the first one. Here we go. I am a storyteller, which means that I tell stories. All kinds of stories. Serious stories and funny stories, cloudy stories and sunny stories. Right now, I am going to tell you a story about an old friend of mine who I've never met but who I know quite well. His name is Zundel. Zundel starts with the letter Z, and this week's the letter Z. Wow, Zundel. And he lives across many seas. In a small village, neither you nor I have ever been to. So this is Zundel. Zundel is a tailor, a poor tailor. He earns his daily bread by sewing and stitching, mending and fixing coats and caps and he dresses and wraps for the likes of you and me. Zundel once had a long winter coat. He wore it in the morning, and he wore it at night. He wore it so much that bit by bit it wore, he wore it out. So what I like in this picture is that it has thread, it has a, a, a tomato here with little needles, a measuring tape, his scissors, and of course, a cup of coffee that many do have. And Zundel is trying to eat some of that Jewish bread, right, that I see here. And he's ready to work. Zundel continued to sew and stitch and mend and fix until, bit by bit, he saved enough pennies to buy himself a beautiful piece of cloth. The cloth had red threads and gold threads and blue threads and green threads, and from that cloth, Zundel the tailor made himself another long winter coat. So this is the fabric, and he's going to make this into a coat. So he liked this fabric, and he's going to sew and stitch it. So, how Zundel loved that coat. He wore it in the morning. He wore it at night. He wore it and wore it and wore it and wore it until bit by bit, he wore it out. And if you notice, the dog is tearing off his coat on the bottom. 
That's terrible. But it happens. And if you see a tailor having his measuring tape over his shoulder or doing something like this on a mannequin, that means that they love to make sure that the clothes are perfect. And here is a picture of his sewing machine. A very old-fashioned sewing machine. And down here is the needle and the thread goes right through here. Amazing. Look at the threads here. Of course he had he was sad, but when he looked, he saw there was enough of that beautiful cloth with the red thread and the gold thread and the blue thread and the green threads to make himself a jacket. That's what he's making. For from a coat, it became a jacket. How Sandell loved that jacket. He wore it in the morning. He wore it at night. He wore it and wore it and wore it and wore it until bit by bit, he wore it out. Zundel was even sadder this time, but when he looked, he was there. He saw there was enough of that beautiful cloth with the red thread and the gold threads and the blue threads and the green threads to make himself a vest, which is what he's wearing here. That's a vest. How Zendel loved that vest. He wore it in the morning. He wore it at night. He wore it and wore it and wore it and wore it until bit by bit he wore it out. For some reason, he loves that fabric. And he loves sewing on his machine. Look at that. He's so focused. Our poor tailor almost cried. He was sure there couldn't be anything left. But when he looked, he saw there was still enough of that beautiful cloth with the red thread and the gold thread and the blue thread and the green thread to make himself a cap. So from a coat, it turned into a jacket. From a jacket, it turned into a vest. And now from a vest, it's turning into a cap, which is kind of a hat. How Sandell loved that cap. He wore it in the morning. He wore it at night. He wore it and wore it and wore it and wore it until bit by bit, he wore it out. My look. Zandel did cry this time. He was absolutely sure there couldn't be anything left. But when he looked, he saw there was still enough of that beautiful cloth with the red thread and the gold thread and the blue thread and the green thread to make himself a pocket. How Zendel loved that pocket. He wore it in the morning. He wore it at night. He wore it and wore it and wore it and wore it until bit by bit, he wore it out. So here's his pocket. So from a coat, it went to a jacket. From a jacket, it went to a vest. From a vest, it went to a cap. And now the cap, it's a pocket. Through the tears, Zandel the tailor held his breath. Surely there could be nothing left. He, But when he looked, he saw. There was just barely enough of that beautiful cloth with the red thread and the gold thread and the blue thread and the green thread to make himself a button. How Zendel loved that button. He loved it in the morning. He loved it more than his coat. He loved it more than his jacket. He loved it more than his vest. He loved it more than his cap. He loved it more than his pocket. He loved it so much 
that he wore it in the morning, he wore it at night, he wore it and wore it and wore it until bit by bit he wore it out. Zundel was absolutely, completely, 100% certain there could be nothing left. And when he looked, he saw he was right. There was nothing left. But... When he looked, I saw. When I looked, I saw. There was still enough of that beautiful cloth with the red thread and the gold thread and the blue thread and the green thread for me to begin this story all over again. What an amazing story. The end. And my question for you is, do you have a family member that sews in your house? Does somebody sew in your house or somebody in the family that does not live in your house sew? I sew. I love to sew. I inherit it from my, great, from my grandparents and my great-grandparents. And that's not something I ask for. It just comes. It's something natural. So I'll tell you this. I have not one sewing machine. I have two sewing machines. I don't have one fabric like in the story. I have many fabrics. I've made masks, I've made um, hats, I've made skirts, I've made costumes, all right? And I have some more here, and I will be showing you at some time this unit of clothes. I'm going to show you my sewing machine, I'm going to show you the other sewing machine, and I am going to show you as much as I can of the fabrics that we can use to create a garment or a piece of clothing or something that you can use. So that being said, this was once a fabric. It was at the fabric store and somebody bought it and designed this beautiful red shirt. And now I wear it. You can do the same. If you don't know what to do, why don't you just try learning from your grandparents? from your great-grandparents, something that you never did before. I did, and I love them, and I appreciate what I have. Because smart is not something you are. Smart is something you get. <laughs>